Welcome everyone to this Bright Talk session, which is brought to you by the Storage Networking Industry Association. The SNIA works to develop storage-related standards and has about 3,500 members from 160 mem uh, companies. You can learn more about the work done by the SNIA by going to SNIA.org slash technical. During this Bright Talk session, we will talk about the SNEA Swordfish specification and how it enables storage management by extending the DMTF Redfish specification. Together, Redfish and Swordfish provide a unified approach for the management of storage equipment and services in converged, hyperconverged, hyperscale, and cloud infrastructure environments, making it easier for IT administrators and DevOps to integrate scalable solutions into their data centers. My name is Don Deal, and I am Senior Standards Technologist at NetApp, and I have been involved with the SNIA for many years. I am currently co-chair of the SNEA Scalable Storage Management Technical Work Group, which is where the SNIA Swordfish specification is being developed, and I'm also the chair of this SNIA Storage Management Initiative, which is sponsoring the work on the Swordfish specification. My role here today is mainly to help get things started and I will also help handle any questions that you might have. The person actually giving the presentation today is Rochelle Alvers. Rochelle is Principal Storage Management Software Architect at Broadcom Incorporated, where she defines storage management integrations, solutions, and standard strategies for the Data Center Storage Group. She has also been involved with the SNIA for many years and is the Chair of the Scalable Storage Management Technical Work Group, where she leads the SNEA Swordfish specification development effort. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask during the presentation, just type them into the Bright Talk Ask a Question box. I will collect those questions and we will answer them during a Q&A session following the presentation. We expect to have about 10 minutes or so for the Q&A session. If you'd like to get a copy of the slides, you can find them as an attachment associated with this Bright Talk session. You'll also find links to a, a page for more information about the Swordfish specification. Also, some of the slides in the presentation contain a lot of detail, so you might find it useful to expand your view to full screen by clicking on the expand icon near the lower right-hand corner of the display. And with no further ado, I will now turn things over to Rochelle for the presentation. Thanks, Don. So a couple of additional disclaimers before we get started uh, into the technical content. Uh, this information represents a snapshot of work uh, and as it represents information also covered at, that we consider a work in progress within SNEA and as such is subject to change without notice. Uh, for additional information, as Don has already noted, uh, you can see at our URL, and we will mention this repeatedly, snea.org slash swordfish. All information about swordfish we try to encapsulate and represent at the single pointer snea.org slash swordfish. Uh, so you've already heard that three times. You will hear that a few more times today, snea.org slash swordfish. Um, so jumping in, what one of the things that we've been looking at at, over the course of the last 20 years in, in the SNIA is a strong focus on standardize, the standardization of storage management. And as such, we've had a couple of different initiatives for that. And in the last few years, we've been looking at what do we need to do to modernize and present you know, an update for uh, storage management. So customers have been looking and vendors have been looking for, you know, an increase in, you know, improvements in storage management APIs. So these are some of the drivers and things that have gone into you know, Swordfish. Um, so what, do, what does that look like? You know, looking at making existing storage management APIs, both uh, proprietary and the standards-based ones, uh, simpler and to implement and consume. Uh, so that goes into looking at uh, what are the technologies, uh, can we make them more, um, more, you know, uh, update the uh, the uh, API interfaces. Um, how can we improve the access efficiency? So as we have developed standardized APIs over the years, we have done it from a rather vendor specific or a vendor focus. Um, 
And so as clients have come in, they've said, you know, I want this set of functions, but, you know, a, as a single command. So give me this set of data um, as, as, a, as a transaction. Um, provide information via a standard browser rather than as a client. So it's really kind of been a transformation of how we access the data. And then also expand coverage, right, to, right, to include converged, hyper-converged, and hyperscale environments rather than just the traditional SAN and, and DAS attached. And then also, again, a transformation, you know, provide compatibility with standard DevOps environments. It's a shift in who and how we are managing storage. So those have been a lot of the drivers that we've looked at in developing uh, a new storage management standard. Um, so the, the, the approach we took was basically take a lot of the learnings we had in the existing management standards. Um, in the existing management standard, for anyone who that, that you know, has been uh, had around for for many years, um, is SMIS. For anyone who's not familiar with that, um, so what we did was we took a lot of the existing learnings from that, um, not starting from scratch, but to take that and refactor that and leverage that into a, simpli a much more simplified model, um, become a lot more client focused instead of being very vendor centric. Also bring in uh, class of service based provisioning and monitoring. So instead of being very, very um, uh, 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 Function oriented, let's look at uh, making something that's much more focused on a service based model. Um, obviously still cover you know what are the what are the very uh, key functions, uh, block file and object uh, moving forward, the the key elements of storage that we want to focus on. Um, and uh, again, take those traditional storage domains that we've always covered and extend them to cover the converged environments where we see a broad distribution of storage moving forward. Um, and also make sure we're covering and uh, extending server storage and fabric together. You don't manage one without the other. So how are we doing that? Uh, there's a lot of work going on in the industry and in the standard space to build uh, the, in, in DMTF, our partner standards organization, to build Redfish uh, to do, accomplish some similar goals um, in the server space um, and in server management. And so what we basically did was, again, we're not starting from scratch. Um, we will leverage a lot of those same components and infrastructures. And so we're built, we built Swordfish as a pure extension. And you'll hear us say extension a lot. And we also say pure extension. We do not develop a new protocol for Swordfish. We leverage, leverage the entire protocol stack from Redfish, and we, we focus exclusively on developing um, the key functionality um, in Swordfish. And so we leverage Redfish, um, which is a RESTful interface um, over HTTPS, so very standard, um, standard way to build an API um, using JSON-based outputs. And in order to help make that as standard as possible, we went to the OASIS, uh, uh, another standards organization, and based our JSON formatting on OData, which is their standardization um, representation for JSON. And so that's kind of the what and the how of the Sorkfish approach. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about now what Swordfish looks like, and and you know both Redfish and Swordfish a little bit of of how we're building, uh, how we're you know what are the building blocks and and what's included. Um, actually, let me talk first about who's building it. Let me I'll remember the order of my slides. Uh, so uh, Don mentioned this, and and I'll I'll mention it again since the presenter version of the slides doesn't give me this option. As you're watching this webcast, if you haven't yet done it, there's an option to expand the webcast screen to full 
to, uh, to full screen. I would highly recommend you do that because not only this slide, but several of the following slides have a tremendous amount of detail, and if you don't expand it to full screen, it becomes an eye, tar an eye chart that you, you really can't see the detail on. Um, okay, so with, with that said, um, this basically just gives you a quick representation um, point in time. This, is, this has changed a little bit over time, but it kind of gives you a view of who's developing both redfish and swordfish. So there's a lot of companies involved in, in developing redfish. Um, you can see server companies on the left, pure storage companies on the right, but there's a lot of overlap here. And this is one of the things we kind of like to highlight. Um, there's a lot of the companies you'll see that build servers and storage um, and that are working on, on building both redfish and swordfish. And, and we, we find this to be um, you know, a really key point for everyone to see and, and to, to highlight that um, you know, these are not built independently. Server management, storage management, and now moving forward, network management. Uh, fabric management, um, all built on the same technologies, um, all being, uh, all of these uh, standards being built by the same companies. All right, so um, also a little bit more before we get into the details here. You know, Swordfish has, we've been working on this for a couple of years now. Um, one of the things we actually did building up redfish, uh, you know, building off of redfish, what we were able to do is basically take from the base of redfish um, and in about nine months draft the first, uh, first version of the spec. Um, so we did that between, you know, December 2015 and in uh, September of 2016 released the first version of the spec. Uh, focus of the next year was really looking at validating the spec. Did we get it close to right? And doing some initial uh, proof of concept implementations, um, getting a bunch of additional functionality, you know, some, some functionality enhancements, a bunch of cleanup, um, and then doing some documentation supporting materials, some open source tools to, uh, to help with um, those POC implementations and some initial implementations. Uh, and so moving into the beginning part of this year, the, you know, that's the kind of focus we have. We're also, we're starting to see some, some hopefully some initial implementations and some stabilization we're focusing, and we'll, I'll talk a little bit later about where we are now and uh, where we'd like to see folks uh, start to, you know, any of, any of you guys start to engage with us and, and uh, where the work is going in 2018 on Swordfish. All right, um, as I mentioned, the functionality included in Swordfish, um, you know, in the 1.0, we'll, we'll say 1.0x, we're at 1.06 that we just released uh, about, oh, it's uh, April 19th, uh, we released basically um, just a few weeks ago, 1.06. Uh, it's the, uh, includes, um, Block storage, provisioning with service control, volume mapping and masking, replication, capacity and health metrics, file system also adds file system and file share, but it does it very, very cleanly. It basically sits directly on top of block storage, so there's not a divergence in the models there. We also include object drive storage. Um, and then we integrate very closely with the Redfish, so we're taking where there were gaps and working to plug, um, uh, you know, you know, plug plug the gaps, right? So build fabric integration points between the two. Um, so there's a lot of work happening to basically bring the models closer and closer together between server and storage and add fabric integration points. Um, okay, so so what you know, and we've talked about you know what the coarse grain functionality looks like. How is the model constructed? Uh, so, if we start with redfish, um, let's, you know, as we mentioned, redfish is a server, uh, basically a, a server hierarchy. So, if you think about a traditional REST hierarchy, it starts with uh, a well-defined URL at slash redfish slash b1, and from there, it breaks things down into, um, slash systems, which is your logical view of your system, a slash chassis, which is 
Think of that as your logical view of your hardware. Um, and then Flash Managers, which is uh, it, it kind of contains two things. From a server perspective, it's kind of the view of your of your BMC. Uh, it's an area where we will take and extend that to be the logical view of your management, your your device manager, if you will, um, or your embedded manager. Similarly, similar concept to a BMC, depending on the type of your storage system. Uh, and then you've got a set of over here, kind of on the lower left. Uh, additional services. So you'll have like an account manager, a log service, event service, a session manager, um, and there's a, there's a plethora of additional services that aren't here. This is just a kind of a very high level view starting point. Um, these kind of light blue boxes are what we call, um, you, uh, you'll see a referred to as largely collections. Um, and so you have a collection and then um, that's kind of, think of it as basically an array object uh, where you have, and then you have um, a, collect, a collection where you'll have an entity inside that. Um, so these gray boxes over to the right are basically like the, the, the objects that would be in um, a collection which would have multiples. Um, and so in a system, you'd have, yeah, you know, your system would be uh, uh, have uh, processors, uh, you know, disks and NICs, that type of thing. Okay, so that's the kind of thing we're building on top of for a server. And so what we basically said was, um, when you're building storage, uh, a lot of storage is basically built on things that look exactly like servers. So we're going to leverage that directly. And there's also, really, when you think about it, there's actually two different ways that um, you construct uh, 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 storage. There's what you extend um, those, those configurations, and you, in some cases, you use them directly. So we, we basically add storage to Redfish in two ways. Uh, and this is, this is a new um, extension to Swordfish uh, in, that we added in 106 was this refinement. Um, so we have what we call the hosted service configuration. Um, and this is where we basically take this model and we add where we focused all of this purple stuff here is this is okay um, so so the the purple area here is really the focus of swordfish right so what we basically said is um, if you think about how you construct many many storage systems um, it's the uh, there is a uh, um, okay sorry I just saw a question come in and I'm going to stop to address that I know we sort of going to do questions at the end but I, I do want to address this one quickly um, I heard there's a, a question about a problem with the audio I had a little bit of feedback there for a second um, and I just want to make sure that there's not a continued problem with audio if it was just a temporary problem with audio before I before I move forward um, if there's anyone else that's having or hearing any continued with problems with audio let me know otherwise I will I will move forward I think it was temporary okay all right um, if you do have, I know there's a little bit of a delay between when I talk and, and the, the webcast. If you, if you have any problems with that, just go ahead and flag them as questions and we will um, we'll, we'll see what we could do to address that. All right, so in the storage systems, um, there, there's really two pieces of, of uh, Swordfish. There's a storage system and a storage service. The storage system is really, think of that as the logical controller. And then the storage service is really where all the fun parts happen here. And so in the storage service, this is where we have all of the all of the what you'd expect to see, right? You're seeing volumes and volumes and files and replicas. The storage system is really just a logical extension of a system. Uh, this is, you know, a, 
a uh, controller, you know, think of this as a controller instead of a server. So, um, so I mentioned there's another model. So before we start digging into too much, um, this is where you would actually see that same kind of thing as a storage system where you really have a very, an extremely lightweight version of that where instead of a logical storage system, you would have, you would basically, you still have a full storage service replication, but you attach the uh, storage system, and instead of having the full logical storage system, you attach your storage service directly to a storage um, and storage controller entity of a uh, of a server, basically of a store uh, of of a system. And so those are really the two ways to integrate. One is you can make a, a very logical, large-scale, abstract um, storage system, um, and, and there's lots of different ways to use that. And this other one is basically you can attach storage services directly to systems. Okay, um, and we did have one question, another question come in that I want to want to kind of pick up now because it's a little bit out of context to talk about later, which is when would you use one one of these configurations versus the other? Um, and so since and obviously since this is new, it's uh, in in 106 just recently. I'll I'll talk about this a little bit. So one of the this, we well, the reason we added this integrated service configuration um, was really to help clarify things like a direct attach um, configuration that wants to use Swordfish. Um, so if you have a server that has a, say, a RAID card in it, um, and that you want to have it use a more complex storage configuration with, say, volumes and storage pools and um, and and uh, you know supporting some notion of class of service in it, you would use this integrated service configuration. You could actually build another Swordfish layer on top of that, um, and uh, then you know, and that one would actually potentially be a hosted service configuration on top of an integrated service configuration, because that one would be leveraging you know, storage services on top of the integrated service configuration. But in this case, because you're actually m modeling this, and I'm moving my, my mouse on my screen like you see it as a pointer, which you obviously can't. But in this case, look at the storage controller here. That's actually how you model the uh, HBA or the, the RAID card. Um, there's another question that just popped up. It said for a pure JBOD, which would be the preferred approach. And in that case, it's, the JBOD itself doesn't have the capability to do a uh, to support Swordfish because for Swordfish, what you're actually getting into is these value-added services. So JBOD is just attaching drives, and so you're actually still only in the Redfish space. You're not getting to the point of doing class of service or volumes. Um, you're just attaching drives, so you're actually not using this configuration. You're, you're only using a, a uh, drive volume attach. You never actually get into the purple space. You stay kind of, I'll just kind of say, you kind of stay in just a, a, a much simpler configuration. You don't ever have to expand there. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's a much simpler model where you're actually only using the storage controller and it's basically storage controller drives, um, you know, a storage controller and its mapped drives, which isn't actually in this picture, but there's more pictures that can actually show that configuration. Okay. Um, we can, oh, I don't want to spend a tremendous amount of time on that. There's some, there's more materials that will be coming that we can, and, and we can do a deep dive on that um, in another topic or in another webcast. Um, Okay, so to see more details uh, also and to do a little bit more deep dives into the different configurations, uh, the, uh, 
we have some a, a work tool that we use. We both use it as a work tool to model our systems as well as to kind of show representations of the configurations. Um, and we call it, these are basically just mockups. So it's a snapshot of a state and time. It's not uh, not something you can use to really uh, model the system. But uh, we've published these at swordfish.mockups or swordfishmockups.com. Not there's a dot in there. Um, and this website basically shows. Uh, several different types of systems, and just to you know, put the appropriate caveats on this, mockups are representations of implementations; they're not normative. Um, but just to kind of give a little bit of an overview of, you know, Swordfish and the hierarchy that we just talked about there, the uh, Swordfish data model uh, that has 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 a bunch of, of of those elements in it, and you'll see some elements in some configurations and not in others. Um, but what we actually can will do here is actually kind of show what you would see in in kind of some large scale configurations versus others here. So what we can do here is we can navigate through the model to learn about and see various some of these various resources. So the mockups show a, a, a couple of explanation or examples of block storage. So a, a simple external array is, is what our simple uh, small um, uh, uh, configuration models, and then we have one that we call complex. And this is really kind of this. Uh, what would it look like if we did kind of a system that did pretty much everything? Um, and then we also have an example of a file server with multiple file shares, just to show uh, a system you know that, use, that uses and exports all of those schemas. Um, so if you go through those mockups and we start navigating down, so you get through like Redfish slash V1. Um, slash storage services, and you see you start navigating down. There's storage services one, and then there's uh, there was like one and simple and uh, complex, or one and or simple and, and complex and file service. Um, and so let's go down in through uh, so that that collection we talked about. So here's here's the three of them, and so we'll go down through the next layer. And say, um, you know, what what's all available? And so we kind of went into the complex one. So we we talked about this real briefly on the high level picture. There's big things you would expect. You see volumes. You see storage pools. Uh, and then you see some things like groups. Um, and there's a couple of different kinds of groups. There's endpoint groups and there's storage groups. Um, endpoint groups are used to Group endpoints. <laughs> That's exactly what you expect to see, and then you can go in and see the properties to say that this is a group that is client facing. This is a group that's target facing. Um, there's also storage group, which is effectively used for mapping and masking. Um, and then you can see, you know, pointers to related resources. I, I call pointers here, um, but this is falls, falls into the links categories. Um, these are things that are not necessarily, you know, elements of the system, but just pointers to, uh, you know, they're not contained by this um, by this storage service, but they're just related, right? So you can see here's some pointers to. Um, and this is so tiny on my particular system, I can't even like enclosure, right? Um, and a hosting system. And um, then there's some other things down here that you could see. These are like data protection line of service capabilities. That starts to get into things that are that we use to help construct the class of service. So I'll talk a little bit about you know class of service here as well, but I'm not going to go today into a lot of detail around this. We have a couple of um, um, uh, I talked about developing some documentation and other resources to help people understand Swordfish. We have some um, what we call uh, Swordfish School videos available on YouTube on our YouTube channel that start to dig into a little bit, and we have some more coming later this year that talk about how you construct classes of service from capabilities and lines of service and classes of service. So those are the pieces here. Um, so classes of service are also, you know. Listed up here, that and so you basically use a line. Classes of service are constructed from lines of service, and so there's hierarchies here of of information about that. 
So what's in a file service? Um, so I, I mentioned this earlier. I'm just repeating it again and highlighting it here. File service have the same building blocks, right? You can have the same things except instead of volumes, you'd have file systems to pick from. So you can see all the same types of objects here. You'd have a file system, you'd have a storage pool. You'd, so instead of going and creating volumes and exposing those up in your in your um, file service, you go to your pool and create your file systems instead. So it's pretty much the highlight of that page. Um, okay, so how do I work within this structure? Uh, how is this the same or different than any other system I've used? Um, let's let's go discover something. Uh, so I'm just navigating around in my system. Um, I want to go see if I have space to. Okay. Um, I know I have access to um, this particular storage pool. Um, do I have capacity remaining in this storage pool to allocate something else? So I'm, I'm going to navigate down to the storage pool special pool. And I'm just going to go look at its capacity information. And so I go into this one, and this particular one has um, in this capacity structure, you know, four different capacity fields populated. So there's consumed and allocated. Um, you know, allocated one is going to be typically populated everywhere. The rest of these are going to be ones that folks can can instrument. Um, you know, based on how complex the system is. So consumed, if if the system is able to determine consumed, and then. I can go look and compare consumed and allocated and say, look, yay, there's space available. I can there's there's space for me to go allocate, you know, more more volumes. Um, okay, so that's kind of how you you know just a really simple example of how I could go you know move around the system and decide I'm able to do something. All right, so what else is going on in Swordfish? I mentioned I talk a little bit more about what we're playing, what we're working on in 2018. Uh, and one of the main things we're we're adding to the uh, Swordfish standard ecosystem this year is profiles. Um, and so this is like how well how well both clients and vendors you know determine and match up what functionality they they can they're providing and that they can support. And we're doing this through profiles. Um, so profiles are, you know, a published set of re of uh, both required, you know, required functionality to support, but also, you know, here's a standardized set of functionality. So we're we're looking at um, how we can look, you know, here's here's the list of basic. Swordfish support, right? So we talked about those two different configurations. Uh, so here's the basic Swordfish support for the integrated service configuration. And here's the basic Swordfish support for that hosted service configuration because we can look at them and go, yeah, those have different schemas. Um, but the Swordfish service part of it is, you know, we would expect to be the same. It's just that system versus storage controller, that, that link point that would be different. Uh, and then you get to, um, you know, add on, you know, add on or incremental functionality, right? We're looking at this at plugging this in as based on features and functions, right? So, do you support um, local replication? Do you support remote replication? Um, the next thing we're looking at is a little bit orthogonal to that. But there are things like certification and conformance requirements. So um, one example of that is working with another group in our in SNEA, which is our um, green storage um, initiative and the green storage twig uh, to develop uh, some energy star requirements. So these are basically there's a couple of different dimensions here. One of which is what are the energy and power metrics to report back 
to conform, you know, so that you can tell if you're conforming to um, the Energy Star. Another one may be um, if there are specific Energy Star compliance and certification tools, um, are there specific controls to plug into that and do you support them? So we're, those are those would be uh, are things those are that one those don't that one doesn't exist yet. Um, that's work we're looking at at uh, developing this year. But those that is what we're talking about um, developing as a profile to say um, yes, I support you know uh, reporting Energy Star compliance or plugging into Energy Star tools. Those, that's how we're looking at that. Um, we have some other conversations going on with partners uh, and standardist, standards partners. Um, we're going to start some conversations. Um, one of the things that we've, uh, we're doing here is the profile uh, technology, if you will, uh, the schema definition is the same that Redfish is using. And so um, Redfish has been working with OCP on developing standardized server, standardized base hardware profiles and standardized server profiles. And so the next step for, um, from OCP's perspective is to engage in um, other pillars. Um, and we're, so we're looking at developing an alliance agreement with OCP. And as we get the standard um, swordfish profiles developed, uh, looking at then developing, you know, profiles to support the OCP storage um, on top of the work that the uh, DMTF and OCP have developed for the base hardware profiles for an OCP configuration. So those would be areas, uh, you know, those will be those are areas that we expect to see developing um, profiles uh, and the work that we're develop working on. You know, a lot of the work we're do we're um, actively engaged in um, in 2018 uh, is is in this area. Um, and so, you know, I, I I am anticipating my own slides. Um, so what we basically, you know, kind of this is this is again a summary of what we've been working on this year. We, you know, we just released the introduction of those two new storage models or storage system models. Um, so we've had schema updates. Um, documentation is back to go with it. Um, one of the things I haven't yet talked about is we have, um, in addition to our spec, we have a user's guide. Um, and so the user's guide talks through use cases for how to interact with Swordfish. Um, we've added new use cases in there for on-demand replicas. Um, and we also have, and I, I did mention some of the other materials like the uh, uh, short for school videos. Um, so those, we've expanded those as well. Um, I mentioned the, the profile work and talked about that. Some other stuff we're, we're planning on working on, um, some storage specific security roles. The uh, Redfish has basic security. Um, we're working on enhancing the privilege service uh, to enable the storage specific security roles. Um, and uh, enhancing the class of service capabilities for spare management and rebuild management. Um, so we there's um, white papers coming soon or later this year around um, how to do spare and rebuild management and some enhanced functionality there. Um, I talked about the profiles already for the SNEA Alliance partner organizations. We have OCP and we have some others that we expect to work with. Um, another area that we're starting work on and we're very excited about is functionality alignment um, across DMTF, NVMe Express, uh, particularly the NVMe MI work and SNEA. We just announced the alliance agreement across those three organizations. Uh, so we will be working on alignment with uh, to ensure that the NVMe MI management standard and Redfish and Swordfish are uh, fully aligned. 
Um, that also brings into play some additional um, work that's happening in DMTF uh, for an, an additional way to deploy Redfish called um, RDE, the Redfish, um, it, which is some work happening in, in, in uh, another area in uh, uh, DMTF called PMCI, which that's a whole lot of acronyms all in one, but basically the Red, uh, RDE splits responsibility for deploying a Redfish service between a management controller and backend devices. That's a short way to say that. Um, and we're also working on, um, and we'll be working on uh, object storage at some point in the future. So there's a bunch of the work that we have coming. A lot of stuff happening this year as well. Um, let's see. So I mentioned these. I'll just highlight these quickly again, and um, then we'll we'll be getting the, the Q and A time here in a little bit. So um, just a reminder to folks to to put questions in. Uh, the online practical guide. Um, Instead of just having a developer's guide, our practical guide is online now. It includes pointers for developers, for users. Um, it's it's really kind of an all all encompassing. If you have any questions about Swordfish, regardless of your role, check out the practical guide. Um, and if you have any questions at all, or if you have content to contribute for that matter, let us know and um, we will evaluate it and submit it there. Uh, so it, the whole point is similarly to snea.org slash swordfish, if there's technical content and learning content of any form, uh, submit it to, uh, you know, look for it and, and submit it to, to be um, plugged into the practical guide. We have both Redfish and Swordfish content there. It's kind of supposed to be your one-stop shop for anything about technical content uh, and learning content for Swordfish. Um, the Swordfish school videos, there's a whole set of those coming. You can also find links to all of those from the practical guide. Um, we also have obviously the, the API spec and um, webcast such as this one. And those you can find links to all of those from SNEA.org slash swordfish. Um, also, uh, I mentioned briefly, you know, that we have been developing a set of open source tools and infrastructure. Right now we we, we have uh, several things available already at github.com sesnia. There's also a link to this in the uh, attachments and links section on the on the webcast uh, site. Um, we have a an emulator available for Swordfish. Um, so it leverages the Redfish emulator. So you can actually start working and the, the Swordfish emulator adds all the Swordfish schema. All of the Swordfish schema are available to work dynamically in the emulator. So the mockups are all static. We'll give you a, a kind of a view to navigate around. If you want to start working with a dynamic variant of Swordfish, then uh, by all means go to GitHub and download the Swordfish emulator and start working with that. We also have a basic Swordfish web client available that will, um, if you if you don't want to just use a uh, REST tool, um, this will allow you to basically discover and display Swordfish services or Redfish services for that matter, um, and navigate through um, very easily. You can use a schema to overlay. Um, it uses the schema to overlay, add, and edit, so it will basically do all of your REST uh, commands for you. So it's not intended to be um, a uh, super, um, you know, highly um, interactive presentation layer, but it will hide all of the REST commands for you. Um, also, we have a couple, for those that are working on higher level integrations and looking at how you might want to actually use um, and integrate Swordfish from a client perspective, we have a couple of sample integrations. Um, and they are actually now, there are, they're out in, uh, they haven't been pulled to top of trunk or pulled to master in GitHub yet, but we do have them out in branches. So we have sample dashboard integrations for Power BI, and I don't know why that says Power BMI, but it says Power BI, and Datadog. Um, so if we have anyone here that is 
a Power BI user um, or Datadog user and that would be willing to work with us and give us any feedback on those. Um, the idea here is really that these are some ideas on how you could use Swordfish um, and just to kind of get people up and started and, and thinking about that. So we have some screenshots out there. We have some documentation that started. Um, there are sample integrations. Um, and uh, if you are able, um, interested, please throw, throw your contact information in the question, the Q&A section, and let us know. Say, hey, Power BI, BI user, here's my contact information. Datadog user, here's my contact information. Um, and we would love to you know, work with you and get your feedback on those, um, on those sample dashboards and sample integrations. Um, okay, I think that we are getting right. Uh, oh, our standard how to present. We are at the end of, of this section. Um, and we are up to Q&A. Just re quick reminders on, on pointers, cna.org slash swordfish. Um, you can find all the latest technical content. You can find pointers to everything I've talked about. And if you are interested in, in submitting content or working with us, um, you can always submit feed, feedback directly to SNEA.org slash feedback, or if you are a SNEA member would like to join, um, here's a link that gives you information about joining SNIA or joining the TWIG to actually work on uh, shaping the standard. Uh, with that, I will hand, the, hand it back over to Don to uh, help us run through questions. Okay, we will now try to answer as many of the questions as we can. And um, Michelle, I guess I'll read these and you can respond. Um, back when you were talking about the two models, there was an additional question, or two deployment models, um, host versus embedded. There was a question, say a volume manager running on JBOD, then what do you do? Okay, so I think that actually kind of goes back to um, a little bit of a, of a hierarchical model again. So the JBOD model really does end up being a, what we call a redfish. It almost, you know, that, that the model for that doesn't branch into, the model for that, for that hardware piece doesn't end up being um, Swordfish itself, but the volume manager does. So it would actually be a hosted service configuration where the underlying hardware itself is not Swordfish. So it ends up being the hosted storage configuration, um, but it wouldn't be a you know layered configuration. Um, so I, I described a model where you would actually have a hierarchy where you might have a hosted service. Serv hosted service configuration on top of an integrated service configuration. If, say, you had a, a volume manager running on top of a RAID, you know, a RAID configuration that's, that's provided by a RAID card, um, that you would actually, you could provide basically a hosted service configuration on top of an integrated service configuration. But if it's a volume manager running on JBOT, you'd basically be a hosted service configuration where the hardware underneath it is just it doesn't. It, it it's not a swordfish model itself. It's just hardware. Right. There's there's no processing happening down there. It's just the attached hardware. Okay. Uh, another question is: uh, Are there provisions for adding custom data in the payloads that swordfish supports? I would guess no. In that case, is there a method to add vendor specific parameters in the payload? Okay, yes. Uh, so all of the schema have a mechanism to support what we call OEM extensions. So the schema actually have two, th uh, two places for that. There's um, OEM extensions in all the schema, and then there's OEM, what we call OEM actions, and I'm getting kind of detailed in, the, in that. But there's, um, we have a notion in, this, in the schema of actions are basically a way to support functions that don't map to rest and this doesn't happen very often it's like you know a reset um, but we have to basically two spots in every schema for um, for adding OEM specific data and um, this is because we've had too many standards where 
things that um, you know that are OEM specific didn't fit very well, and um, so Redfish and therefore the extensions of Swordfish are very explicit in making sure there's a very very clean place to add OEM extensions. Very good. Okay, got another question here. Uh, is there any work related to NVMe over fabric which is being worked on? Yes. Uh, so there's there's a couple of different spots. Redfish has actually um, got a fabric model. Um, so we've been working on it in a couple of different places. So DMTF is, and uh, and SNEA have both been working on this. Um, so GMTF came up with a base model for SAS and, um, and SATA and PCIe fabrics. Um, and they've also been taking some and doing some work on the NVMe over fabric model for that. Um, there's also some work happening on NVMe over fabric um, connections, you know, device connections to their basic models. Um, SNEA has been working on uh, the fabric models and extending it for, um, uh, you know, any of the Fabric Connect perspective. Um, and so a, a lot of the work for that has been happening in base Redfish, but getting reviews from the SNEA side. Um, so there is a lot of work that's been happening on the base fabric models. Um, there's also a lot of people, if you go back to my, my Venn diagram of joint numbers, a lot of the time, a lot of the work ends up happening in the MTF side by the same people. <laughs> they were just all joint numbers. Um, so uh, that's, you know, it's, um, and sometimes it's the same people. We just, I'm like, I'm, I'm working on the DMTF side instead of on the CNS side on a, on a particular day. But um, there is um, that NVMe over fabric work has been happening um, over about the last six or nine months in uh, on the fabrics, on the fabric model and on getting the device, uh, a lot of the NVMe over fabric device support added. Uh, I'm not sure it's I'm not sure if it's complete yet, but um, I know there's been a lot of work on it. Okay. Um, here's another one. I think of Redfish as talking to the BMC. Is Swordfish talking to the quote real unquote CPU running on the running the high level operating system that has the RAID driver, et cetera, in it? Hmm. Um well it, it's it's more a split of the functionality, right? Um, so, you know, if 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 you really kind of just go back to the schema and say, you know, where do you want to add? Where where do you want? You know, what functionality are you adding? So Redfish, I mean, Swordfish really is a pure extension. We we use Redfish. Um, it's not really, in some cases it's not really Redfish or Swordfish, it's just which schema are you using. So one example would be, um, you know, uh, both sides use the volume schema, but when you actually say, um, I want to start, I need to, you know, I need something that's using a storage pool, that's clearly um, that's clearly in the Swordfish space. If you if you go and read the Swordfish spec, it basically says, no, I need to have a class of service. Um, but simply adding classes of service it doesn't necessarily mean your system is getting really, really complex. Because you can actually do that in a very, very simple way without adding a ton of expertise to, below it. You can you can kind of make it really simplistic, but and not really have a lot of intelligence behind it, right? It's it's a sliding scale there. Um, yeah. It's it. Um, you can actually have volumes that are RAID volumes without getting to class of service, without getting to pools and everything. So it it's a really this this it, it's it's a graduated. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm 
not there's we it's very nuanced um and it, but it's a graduating scale right so you can have a very simple system that says i don't i'm not using any of the sort for schema i'm just i have a storage controller i have a volume you know that could create a volume and a drive and that's all i do but when you start moving into the swordfish space it's it's not some giant leap to get there it's a it can be very small incremental to get there i'm just starting to use the swordfish schema but it it it, it is kind of what you're i think a little bit of what you're trying to get to is in this question is i'm adding a lot more intelligence i'm i'm adding the ability to scale because if you start with what i just said is i've got this little storage controller which is all Redfish knows about. The Redfish schema only has, I have this little storage controller that can do some volumes and drives. That's where it stops. It doesn't scale. When you start getting to Swordfish, you're basically adding the ability to scale. You're, you're adding the ability to abstract. And it doesn't have to be big, but it can get big. And um, so Don, anything you would add to that? Uh, or no, it, I think that pretty much captures it right now without having more specifics to talk around. In, okay. In, I think we, we've got a pile of questions here. We should probably proceed. Okay. Uh, All the right. Next so, one is, yeah, that, yeah. yeah, we can talk so, more about that one offline as well. If, if somebody wants, if you want to flag your, uh, you know, flag your name and something to follow up on that one. Um, okay. Next. Um, Here's one that's talking about the heart of some things. What is meant by endpoint? A server node, a storage node? Since JBODs fall within the domain of server hardware, can software RAID solutions take full advantage of Swordfish? Okay, so um, endpoints are, are really an abstract, uh, no, abstraction is not quite the right word, but endpoints are really an abstraction of a connection, right? And so when um, what you're trying to do is describe what is connected to something else without trying to say to have to say uh, everything about the underlying hardware. What you're actually trying to do is say this protocol is connected. Um, you know, these are the protocol connections. So you take it up a level from describe from having to describe the physical ports. Um, it's more like that logical connection on top of it. Um, and so there's a, and I, I'm trying, I'm, I'm being really vague because endpoints can be really vague. Um, and, and we have at least 10 ways to describe, you know, that endpoint can be, can be used right now and it's growing. And that's actually a good thing. Um, so the point is really to say, bring it up away from the ports, from, from describing a physical port connection. Um, and so, so, uh, yes, you, 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 software RAID solutions can absolutely take full advantage of Swordfish. And the, the, I'll, I'll add one more thing on that is we don't actually have to use endpoints even. So like the integrated, ser ser the integrated uh, service configuration, I can actually do a complete model of that without having to use an endpoint because the interconnect stuff is, is, completely, is completely known. But for a large configuration, the endpoints come in are super valuable because they help you describe the entire interconnect. So, um, you know, it, 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 but they're very valuable in terms of saying, I can abstract away from the physical network configuration to describe what I want connected to, to, to what uh, and what the protocol is. So I hope that helps. Okay, and we're getting very close to out of time here, but I uh, prioritized a question here. Is Swordfish planning on staying an extension to Redfish? Does it have a goal of being integrated into Redfish specification at some point? Um, yes, I think we're planning on staying an extension to Redfish. Um, the primary reason we do not plan to, um, you know, throw all of the content back over the wall to Redfish uh, is that, it, you know, we have a large body of domain experts in SNEA, and Redfish and DMTF at this point are um, working on 
so many things. They are trying to partner with other organizations and continuing to try and partner. And I say this with both my DMT hat, DMTF hat. I'm a member of both organizations. Um, uh, DMTF is trying to work on adding networking and adding um, uh, support for so many things that being able to segment off and say, this group over here does storage and focuses on it, and this group over here does networking and focuses on it, that is actually a great thing for the Redfish ecosystem. Um, being able to segment off and say, even if it's the same people, but just being able to go off and focus and say, you guys own this, and this is your domain, and and um, is just is allowing the entire ecosystem to, to move forward faster. Okay, and with that, I'm afraid we need to wrap it up here. If you, and there are additional questions. I apologize, we're not able to get to them today. If you'd like to uh, obtain email answers to your questions, you can go ahead and send them to the SNEA uh, feedback portal, which is the last bullet on the slide that's currently showing. And other than that, thank you everyone for joining this Bright Talk session. We hope you now have a better understanding of what Swordfish is and how it extends Redfish to help with the management of storage in a world where scaling has become increasingly important. Um, please remember that you can easily find more information about Swordfish at snea.org slash swordfish. And you can also find more information about Redfish at dmtf.org slash redfish. And these links take you to web pages that are actually collections of public information about uh, these important standards. And uh, we would also appreciate it if you would rate this, this Bright Talk session. Your, your five-star reviews would be much appreciated. And um, lastly, do remember to watch for more sessions about swordfish in the near future. And thank you all for calling in.